Okay. So thank you to, uh, for coming into our sukkah. It's a little bit too early, but better early than never. Uh, because I'm leaving tomorrow night, I cannot be uh, here next week to sit with you in the sukkah. So, well, Yom Kippur ended last night. We can already start sitting and dwelling in, 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 uh, in this special place. It's special because it's fulfillment of the commandment, because God commanded us to sit in a, a, in a tabernacle or live in the tabernacles uh, for seven days. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry that we haven't built the air conditioner into the sukkah, but uh, actually it would be a, it would be strange if we, if we would. It's usually done in the way that it's uh, it's like open and air can come and rain can come through. Uh, in this way, it's pretty kosher what we have here. It's like a kosher sukkah. And it's, uh, yeah, it's Dallas and it's September. It's maybe too hot for this uh, season, but well, that's that's okay. So welcome. Usually in the sukkah, we welcome uh, different guests every uh, every day sitting here, like starting with Abraham and with Isaac and with Jacob and David is also there and Moses and Aaron and Joseph. So we uh, we welcome different guests with different uh, meaning because it's uh, it's good to be in a sukkah in a good company. Also, uh, sukkah is a place where we invite like real guests and uh, to fulfill the commandment to sit in the sukkah, uh, we need to uh, to spend some time here. And this time, uh, I mean, sitting or living in the sukkah means to eat something there. It's not necessary to sleep here, but at least we need to eat something. So come for lunches during the Sukkot. The Sukkot starts Friday night, this coming uh, Friday, but you can come even earlier, eat, fellowship, receive guests, do seminars, Bible studies, prayer meetings, just whatever. It's open, no reservation uh, evidently needed. So come and uh, enjoy this uh, fulfillment of the biblical commandment to uh, dwell in the sukkah. Now, uh, you know where the sukkot is described in the Bible. Where in the Bible... Uh, one of the like very clear evidences, not evidences, but clear descriptions of the Sukkot. In Leviticus chapter 23, could somebody of you open the Bible and uh, help us by reading from this, uh, from this chapter? It's worse. Where it begins with Sukkot. And yes. it's right after Yom Kippur. Yeah, the Feast of Tabernacles, and that's what it says. Well, if it says that, probably they're correct. <laughs> Verses 33. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles with seven days to the Lord. On the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no customary work on it. For seven days, you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day, you shall have a holy convocation, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It's a sacred assembly, and you shall do no customary work on it. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. You offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering and a grain offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything on its day, besides the Sabbaths of the Lord, besides your gifts, Besides all your vows and besides all your free will offerings which you give to the Lord. Also on the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep the feast of the Lord for seven days. On the first day there shall be a Sabbath rest and on the eighth day a Sabbath rest. And you shall take for yourselves on the first day the fruit of beautiful trees, branches of palm trees, the boughs of leafy trees and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. You shall keep it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. All who are native Israelites shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. 
So Moses declared to the children of Israel the peace of the Lord. Excellent. Thank you very much. So what uh, what traditions or what is required for that? It's not just tradition. You remember what the feasts are? A special places, uh, the special times, appointed times in the divine calendar. And, and again, it's not uh, when <laughs> it's not when we uh, meet with God individually. It's when the uh, the God of Israel was making an appointment to meet for the holy convocation to meet with the people of israel as the whole as the people and that's uh, so it's a community uh appointed times israel meets with god god is not bound by the time but he decides to meet with us in certain times Sometimes in uh, like Protestant and evangelical Christianity, we underestimate the significance of a special appointed times. But for the Jewish people, these times are very important because it was commanded in the Torah this way and uh, God meant something by that. It's not that we, are, that we are now speaking of being bound by the law or doing something because uh, we are obligated or just making our salvation dependent on that. Salvation has never been dependent on observing the holidays. But if God invites us to meet with him as the people at certain times, it's, it's a joy to come to these appointments and to celebrate or just to uh, do something according to his will, according to his desire. He's showed us how he wants to celebrate it. So what are the appointed traditions? related to this appointed time. What should we do? We just read it. Talk to me. Talk to us. It's for seven days. Seven days. And it's interesting that uh, first day is the day, uh, day uh, of Shabbat, so day of rest, and the eighth day. So it's seven days, but eight day is one that added to this, right? So it's seven plus one. Okay, what else? No regular work. No regular work during the first day and the eighth day. In all other days, we can do work. What else? We should eat well, together. Well, it's not written. It's Drink. good to eat together. It's not written there specifically. Drink. But you're right. because So we need to build a sukkah. Okay. What else? Bring special offerings. Good. What else? The same Sacred assembly. Yes, on the first day and on the eighth day. Okay, what else? Present a food offering to the Lord. Offerings, yes, already mentioned. Okay. Great. What else? It's there is something rejoice. else beautiful. Rejoice. What is rejoice? Right, rejoice, but rejoice in what way? Come on, it's written there. Look at your text. You're looking at me. Look at your text. <laughs> rejoice, right? Rejoice, but rejoice in, do in, seven days. in doing what? You, yeah, but you need to take something to in order to rejoice. Like some branches, right? I'm I'm wondering why we are not noticing that so uh, so easily because although it's written there, wow. hmm? palm trees, beautiful trees, uh, with trees. So why why we just why don't we notice it so easily? It's so clearly written there, but we don't notice it easily. Why? It involves work. I don't know because because we probably because it's so unusual to us to rejoice while taking something in our hands. Let me start with uh, with uh, with this. I have it. I have it with me here. This is palm branch. This is myrtle. It's a beautiful tree. And this is how you call it. You no, no, no. It's it doesn't smell. It doesn't taste. It doesn't produce any fruit. What is that? It's written at the. Look at your text. 
willow tree yes. Yes. yes yeah so we take this <laughs> i know it's hot i'm sorry but it's only one brown back like that in the year we do it in the heat <laughs> And outside without air conditioner. I'm sweating as well. So understand my brain is sweating. So just like, <laughs> but uh, we take this. And in addition to that, according to the Jewish tradition, we also take something else called a trog. Uh, so let me place it in the proper place. What is that called? So, this, uh, this, the one this all together called lulav. Wow. Do you know how lulav uh, is translated? We have some people who should know. Come on. Well, it's it's a palm tree. A palm tree. So ba, a palm uh, palm branch is called lulav, but the whole. Uh, the whole the all these things together are called lulav because it's probably the largest here and the most uh the mentioned the first and uh it's very important part there is also uh, a fruit oh it's not on mm -hmm. jacob could you unpack it for me please so this is uh this is what we do for this uh for this holiday we uh thank you this is beautifully smelling uh fruit cost a fortune it's not a lemon it's a special true fruit called the trog and you need to order that and uh and it's uh it costs a lot but we have it it's uh, it's kosher after the feast you you don't simply eat it in some traditions you bury it in some tradition you prepare uh, you use it for the food in some traditions women uh, like uh, to uh, to eat it or to uh, get it with the tea because it uh, it makes the childbirth easier well it's a little i think it's a little bit superstitious to this but i'm just mentioning to you different uh, views in different traditions now so uh, you take uh, you take this uh, you you take the uh, etrog in the left hand, lulaf in the uh, right hand. You uh, say a benediction, and the benediction you understand uh, what benediction. Hopefully, you understand what benedictions we should say. Say all benedictions begin by saying, "Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the Universe." So Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam. Uh, so we give thanks him, and then we say. Uh, the one who uh, sanct uh, so who sanctified us through his commandments, and then we add what commandment we mean. In this case, we we said the one who commanded us to wave the lulav, and after we say this blessing, we uh, we turn the etrog around, we put it together, and then we rejoice. And we rejoice in fulfillment of uh, what is said in the Psalms, that God is good. And it's so good to worship him because he is good. And we do it, uh, as, uh, as the Bible says, all corners of the world praise him. How we do it? We stand up, we turn toward Jerusalem. Does somebody of you know where Jerusalem is? That way, so okay, so we turn that way and we shake it like this, that way, and then we shake it backwards and then this direction, that direction, up and down. So we uh, we, sh uh, we praise him in all ways of uh, in all ways so just all corners of the world and uh we praise him there because he is everywhere we praise him everywhere 
Okay. I don't know how we're uh, going to do with this uh, Lulav and Dendrog. Maybe we can place it here for everybody to use, but I'm afraid that it will disappear. <laughs> so we, we still need to decide how to deal with that. But you can take and shake it. And Jewish tradition explain, it, uh, explain this in uh, various ways. One of the ways is like myrtle it smells beautifully, but doesn't produce any fruits. And, uh, and there are some people who uh, who study the Torah. So smell is the study of the Torah and fruits are doing the work, uh, doing the work of the Torah. I need to see it because the camera is here. Uh, and uh, so we, uh, uh, and there are some people, Israelites, who uh, study the Torah, but don't do the Torah. There are people like a palm tree, uh, they don't study much. They are not very knowledgeable in the Torah, but they produce good fruits. They uh, they do good. There are uh, uh, people uh, like how is it called? Willow tree. Willow tree. Uh, they uh, they don't study the Torah. They don't do anything good. So no fruits, no smell. And there are pe and there are people like a rock. It smells good, and it tastes good. Although we never try it, uh, but we assume that it's <laughs> that it's a good fruit. So the people who study the Torah and do good deeds, and we all together today for this holiday, we are all one people. We are one. Uh, we all together, because God receives us as the people. He forgives us as the people. He makes atonement for us as the people. Even if the if the we uh, three uh, people repent. And to return back to God, God accepts us. So for this feast of Sukkot, he accepts us all. And the sacrifices that we bring, out, they also re uh, remind us that God accepts us all. And also there are sacrifices uh, that reminds us that God re uh, receives not just the Jewish people for the feast of uh, Sukkot, but also he receives all the nations for the feast of Sukkot. So it's actually a beautiful illustration that independent of how good we were in the Torah and with our deeds, God is ready to accept all of us, Jews and Gentiles, righteous and uh, those who are no, who haven't been so righteous for this, for those very good scholars of the Torah and those who never read it. So it, we all get access to him. And that's why Sukkot is a good reminder uh, and who a uh, very good uh, prophecy about the Messianic kingdom. In, even in the Jewish tradition. And now, do you remember uh, Jesus, Yeshua, coming to Jerusalem? Uh, and do you remember uh, oh. the last time? Uh, the, the last time, it's, it was like, according to the tradition, it was Sunday and stuff. So how in Christian tradition this Sunday called? Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. So it's the Sunday of Lulav. Why? <laughs> Because because people were taking branches. Well, it I don't remember that in the Bible it's clearly stated that it was palm branches. But what other branches they could take besides palm? They were greeting the Messiah. The Messiah arrived, and as the Messiah arrives, what we should celebrate, sort of, or how should we greet him? At the, the Feast of Sukkot. Amazing. It was Pesach. It was the Passover season, and they were celebrated as Sukkot is here. Why? Because the Messiah was coming. They were greeting him as the Messiah, saying, Baruch uh, HaBashem Adonai, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So the people greeting Yeshua coming to Jerusalem, they were waving sort of like Lulaf at that time. I don't know if they uh, found a rock instantly, but at least they took some branches and uh, and made uh, Lulav to greet uh, the Messiah. Because the tradition or an old ancient uh, tradition of our sages says that we are going to greet the Messiah with the Lulav. And then why? Uh, and then uh, and that's why we as Jewish followers of Yeshua, we wave Lulav. We greet the Messiah. We proclaim his kingdom. Anything uh, what you would like to add or ask regarding Lula? Well, 
or maybe the typical weather during this season of there in Israel uh, like this uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe in Jerusalem a little bit uh, colder but they used to this type of weather first second they know how to live without air condition hmm. uh, we had a different situation so I'm sorry we have like 15 more minutes to survive and then we will go <laughs> back to air conditioning room i have a question about yes. that you yeah. called it a trope yes um so you said that some will bury it is that to produce a new with the tree that it produces no not exactly why would uh, they bury it it's uh, because it's it's sort of holy okay. because it's it's uh, it's something very very important and very and very old uh, now, another important tradition or commandment to build a sukkah. What do we say when we build uh, build a sukkah uh, as a benediction? Exactly. We start with Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us through His commandments and commanded us. to sit to dwell yeah to sit in the sukkah because it's said in the in the torah sit or live in the sukkah dwell in the sukkah uh, for seven days so we fulfill the commandment and for the first night when the sukkot just starts we say as we usually say at the beginning of a special celebrations at special events blessed are you o lord our god king of the universe who gave us life and gave us also an opportunity, just protected us and let us survive till this moment. So we acknowledge God as the one who gives us survival. And I, uh, so, Sukha. What we, what do we know about uh, about Sukha? It's uh, it's like very very temporary uh, shelter made of uh, green uh, and something not, it's not a fast construction. It's like a shelter. Moses, uh, Mo God said to Moses, uh, to Moses, they need to live in the sukkah because I placed them in the sukkah in the desert. But they never used to live in the sukkah in the desert, in literal. They used uh, they used to live in Ochalim in the tent made of skin of the animals. So why God said that I placed you in a sukkah in the desert? Because the word sukkah it's a word play with uh, with another word with root sachach, what means giving shelter, so giving protection, giving like a like a bird uh, covers the chicks under uh, under the uh, the wings so god was like a bird over israel he was protecting israel that's why we had bread to eat that's why uh, our clothes and our shoes never got weary for 40 years can you imagine what store did they buy it at? Uh, but uh, the thing is god was giving a special shelter god was doing sahak and that's why we to live in sukkah to remember his uh, his protection. Also, it reminds us that we are just temporarily here in this uh, in this world. It's uh, and we need God to care for uh, to care for us. Also, uh, so, uh, when the Messiah will come back, according to the Jewish tradition, everybody, not just Jewish tradition, according to Zechariah chapter 14, Sukkot is going to be the feast that we are all going to celebrate. In fact, the feast of Sukkot is very, is very international, very uh, for all nations. So all nations will come to celebrate Sukkot. So the Messiah, the Messianic kingdom is a related to the Sukkot. Now, do you remember uh, Yeshua going to the Mount of Transfiguration with his disciples? 
And then he was, uh, he got suddenly radiance of God. His garment was white. And the Peter in uh, one of the disciples there, he said, we, we saw in the uh, in the uh, letter of Peter, he says, we saw them, we saw the Messiah in his kingdom glory. And what was his reaction? Do you remember? Let us write up a text. Let us build the sukha for you, for Moses, for Elijah. So let us uh, let let us build you a sukha. It was not sukkot, but Peter just his initial just spontaneous reaction was, "Wow, let's celebrate." And it's uh, and before uh, and before that, uh, Yeshua said that some of you will see the son of. Uh, and so, so will see me in the glory uh, of of the kingdom. So it was instantaneous reaction, instant reaction for uh, for what they saw there. So, any questions or comments uh, related to the sukkah? I was reading. Oh, sorry. Uh, join. Oh, if you wonder, no. How and why should I do any of these? I think I have a, a way uh, to justify it in a way. And in, in, if you're going to go or you have already gone through several classes in which they're going to talk about spiritual disciplines and they're going to give a lot of uh, uh, cre creative ways uh, to take creative things to adopt and pass spiritual disciplines. But what better ways, uh, what better things to adopt than the, the things that God has given in the Torah itself? Uh, so you may not say, okay, well, I'm not Jewish, and uh, I'm, I'm afraid that this may be, you know, construed as being under the law and things like that. But if you approach it as, hey, these are great spiritual disciplines. I could do this. Maybe I could order my lulav online, and I could do this for the seven days, you know. It, it will be a great blessing because these are things that God himself has given as his ways to, to sanctify Israel. And therefore, there is some spiritual charge, a spiritual charge uh, to this commandment that everybody can benefit. So, Thank you, Troy. Yeah, so, uh, so I, was, I was reading through uh, Kings yesterday about Solomon building the temple. And I, I don't know if it... I, remember correctly, is that the same month as Sukkot? Like the seventh month? I think Yeah, seven, like month. seven months is okay. the month. Is there like a... I guess I'm trying to find a connection between that festival or the feast and then the building of the temple. Is, like, is there any like deeper thing I should like consider with like building the temple and, and this feast? Uh, well, it's a, it's a good point. Yes. Okay. There is no coins... When it comes to the time, yeah, there is no coincidence in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, with uh, like with even with G, uh, with Yeshua's death, with his resurrection, uh, with the giving of the Holy Spirit, and in the Old Testament, like temple and uh, its destruction, etc. There is no coincidence when it comes to the time. Everything, yeah, you can smell the that's right. Everything is in a certain uh, so the time. Is always non coincident. There are no coincidences in God's plan generally, but also with the time. It's always God is always on time doing doing things, and there is always meaning. Now, another thing that is important about Sukkot is to, uh, especially in with Yeshua and in Yeshua, Yeshua Jesus celebrated the Sukkot. So he sat in the Sukkah for sure, and for sure he was using lulav. Mm -hmm. Because it was the way of Jewish life at that time. He could even not ex imagine otherwise his love. So in addition to why, uh, to, to tell why Sukkot is important for us, because it's important for our Messiah. Sukkot uh, was an Im important part of Jesus' lifestyle. And uh, what would Jesus do? You know, this thing. So what would Jesus do? Let's do it. So what would Jesus do during this time? Sit in the sukkah and wave the lulav. Well, it's not, the, it's not that you must do that. 
It's not that you're obligated to do that. No, just please don't misunderstand me. It's not about you being obligated. It's just like rejoice. You, you are, there is a possibility and opportunity and even an invitation to rejoice with Jesus as Jesus rejoiced this, uh, this season. You see, not because you must, but because it's so good. It's delight, you know? And also, as I mentioned before, Sukkot reminds us of God's protection and provision in the desert. It reminds us about his care for us now. And it also reminds us, reminds us of a great anticipation of his kingdom to come. So we celebrate and it links us with what happened, with what's going on in God's provision now, and points us toward the glorious future in the kingdom of the Messiah. And Sukkot, it's not a coincidence. Sukkot is celebrated after Yom Kippur, right? And Yom Kippur, as we spoke last week, if you didn't, uh, if you were not here, listen uh, recording on our YouTube channel. Uh, uh, Yom Kippur, it's a national atonement for the people of Israel. After we got this atonement, after our sin is covered and forgiven, what Yeshua did once and for all, if you remember, praise be his name. After the sin is forgiven and atoned for, we can celebrate. Celebrate Sukkot. So, we are saved in Jesus. We are saved in Yeshua. Let's celebrate. That's the message of, uh, of Sukkot. I mean, one of the messages. Many, hundreds, thousands of messages of uh, this uh, feast. We have three more minutes. Any other questions or any comments? How widespread is this celebration among the Jewish people? How spread out? Well, at this point, how? How many Jewish people celebrate it? Well, religious Jews, Orthodox Jews, they celebrate it. Uh, but all Jewish community, if it's Jewish community, they build sukkah, mm -hmm. at least for the community. Many Jewish people build it on their backyards or balconies somewhere. But in Jew uh, Jewish communities, even reform or liberal Jewish communities, they build even like cultural. I mean, even those who don't believe, they still build the sukkah just to sit there because it's nice. <laughs> and because uh, because it connects us uh, with the rest of our people. So it's like, it's one of those things that is typically Jewish when we come to the calendar. And Sukkah is a great opportunity to share the gospel with your Jewish friends, by the way. Oh, you have a Sukkah in your backyard. You have this. What is that? By the way, your Messiah, my Savior, <laughs> he was living in a Sukkah. He was, wait, uh, do you have this one, Lulav? He Jesus did it. Do you know that? Just tell me more about uh, about uh, how to celebrate because I want to know more about the lifestyle of my Messiah or your Messiah and my Savior, Jesus. So it's always a great opportunity to share the gospel and to point to the Jewish uh, people that it's your Messiah. To, in building the bridge between Jesus as the Messiah of Israel and his people Israel. So, so use it. That's an opportunity. Yes, please. Is that is the Messiah believers in Israel will celebrate together with which in Israel? Well, I know that uh, most Messianic congregations built uh, the sukkah. The churches, I mean, in Israel, there are many churches also. Mm -hmm. Uh, and churches with Israelis, with Jewish people there, I'm not sure what they do. They probably celebrate more Christian uh, holidays. Uh, but uh, but if somebody identifies himself or a community identifies itself with the Jewish people, we build it. We sit in the sofa. Yeah. The last question, the last comment. Thank you for your perseverance. <laughs> Thank you that you. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Bring it back. <laughs> so thank you that you stayed uh, in the sukkah uh, with us or close to us uh, in spite of this Dallas 
Israeli heat. And uh, please, yeah. yeah, enjoy the sukkah in the next two weeks. Then it's not going to be the, uh, here uh, till the mil, uh, centennial, not millennial, but centennial sukkah of DTS built is uh, okay. next year. That okay. Golden? Can that be gold? I don't know. <laughs> not, I don't know about gold. Thank you very much. God bless you and happy sukkah.